Hey, everybody, this is Seth After. I'm coming to you from my studio in New York City. All right, here we go. I am going to use black cardstock. I love working on a black background. It changes everything. I love the contrast. The important thing to know when you use black as a background, you need to start at least with opaque paints because if they're translucent, they're almost literally going to disappear. So we are just going to grab some uh, paints. We're going to go to some of my usuals, shocker of all shocker, since this is kind of my go-to palette. These are all paper artsy paints. They are my colors. Um, and I just often use the same ones. One of these days, I am going to break out the paints that I don't use. That would actually be a great demo. But for, for now, we're, we're going to kind of go with these. We're going to go with this base of cool tones. And then to add some contrast, we're going to go with some warm tones. Also, the contrast will be between the dark black background, the lighter opaque paints. I know people love to know the paint colors. So we're going to just say Glacier Ice, Tundra, Niagara Falls, Heavy Cream. And then we're going to do another contrast. We're going to use translucent warm colors, smoked paprika and terracotta. All right, so let's just have a play. So we're going to go, just going to put a few spots of a few colors. And my jelly plate is not going to stick very well down because I have this paper here. So it's going to slide around which will be an interesting effect. So one thing we're going to do is not waste this paint. So we're going to just spray her off and just start a print. If you've never used a jelly plate, I promise you it will change your life. All right, I'm just going to pull a few and kind of make a, a mess, which is my favorite way to create. I'm going to stick with the cool tones as the base layer. I like to, by the by, um, put paint on this way because it it mixes differently than if I stirred the two colors, say with my paintbrush. So yeah, that's a good amount of paint. I like that better. All right, so I am going to uh, play a little bit by going there. On there, and just starting each one with just a little bit of that coloration so it's less consistent. Having the heavy cream in will allow me to make sure that some of the shades are lighter. I want it lighter just because I want a relatively light background so I can stamp more easily over it. When I'm doing this as a way just to play, I am not really thinking about making anything all that special. It's really just to get some color on. I am using black cardstock, just traditional, regular old cardstock. I like cardstock, but I especially just like the darkness of black cardstock. It saves me a step from, say, 
having to use black gesso to get some uh, black background. Okay, let's let's look. Let's. Oh, I have some. I have some ideas here now. All right, I'm going to add another step that I didn't plan on adding. And I love when that happens because that means I'm in my zone. Whenever I do these demos, I might have an idea in mind. You know, I always have an idea in mind, but for me, it's never about pre-planning. And so usually I just go where the layer takes me. And I just had the idea of where I want this layer to take me. So we're just gonna do more than I originally planned on doing. All right, so let me just use up an excess. And then I am going to go with the terracotta and the smoked paprika. They are translucent. And because they're translucent, I will not lose any detail I have here, but I will add the warm tone. I'll add some shading, some depth. All right, so let's put a little bit of the terracotta. Terracotta is kind of like a, a rich ochre. So it's automatically going to add some vibrance and it will shift the coloration as well. I'm going back and forth between the brayer and the jelly plate because there's no reason to, and that's what I'm looking for. There's no reason to waste paint. Going to go in with the smoked paprika. Just kind of a burnt orange. And it's just going to keep adding some depth to each piece. And obviously it's shifting it pretty dramatically because it's no longer the icy blues or no longer the icy blues on their own. What am I gonna do next? This is where I'm gonna break out my dye sprays. It's one of my favorite things to do. So I am going to um, keep this light and I'm just going to pull out a few of the dye sprays and let's just see what happens. Um, okay, I'm gonna use maybe sunflower, underwater and sea spray. I'm just spritzing them basically on the jelly plate. And I'm going to pull and I'm going to get the you notes, know, a very bright light. It's hard to see, but there's some um, real nice depth I'm getting here. There we go. That's kind of what I want more. If I spray closer to the plate, I get bigger pools. And let's go with some lavender. Yeah, this is what I'm hoping for. And then I always sprayer it out, which spreads the ink and tries it as well pretty quickly. But you begin to get that depth and because it is translucent, the dye sprays, you don't lose what's underneath. So 
sprays on the jelly plate are one of my favorite things. I just love the effects. So let's just try maybe um, some honey and some spring green. I think that might work there. Uh, let me spread this out a little bit. We're going to get some random coloration. Right, initially it looks kind of like a hot mess, but as we spread it out, we just begin to get this richness and depth that, I don't know, I just can't get with paint. There we go, that's, that's it. Going to shift and do some other colors here. Let's go with some rusty saffron. And let's also go back to sunflower. But spray really closely. And I have some other colors on there. So I am definitely going to get some mixing and some kind of warping of colors. I just love the change. It's sort of depth and richness I get there. And you'll notice that wherever the dye sprays went over just the black, it literally evaporates and disappears because they're completely translucent. All right, so this one needs more, more, more. Let's just really hit it with some lavender. And some wild rose. This is really gonna just deepen the color. And I just love the way it has some natural spotting to it as well. And then last but not least, let's just use this up. Be done with the jelly plate. Because honestly, layering these sprays like this, this I could do for decades without a break. And the more you layer, just the more richness and shifting you get. Just thanks for being here, spending time with me. Everybody have a great day or a great night, depending on where you live. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.